we'll just say that we stay here and this sojourn comes over here. Okay. Right? Well, yeah. that sojourn easily comes back into cover. Right. So what we can do is we slightly move to the left and then that sojourn can do nothing. Somebody might say, well, then aren't you further from cover? Well, no, because your cover isn't a wall, it's the floor. And theoretically, exactly. you're always, if you you can move further left to force that cover into, that sojourn to be out of cover and backwards a little bit to where you hide your hitbox, which is exactly what they do here. So that actually you're just as close to cover as you were on the right, but you remove that sojourn's cover. Exactly. Not only that, we can move slightly backwards so that, again, like you said, we're minimizing our hitbox, right? Right. And so they can just see your head. However, this is a situation where we now have the advantage uh, because we're showing so much less and yes. therefore we can strafe aim. Right there. There's the cover. Hey guys, got something a little bit special for you. A collaboration with an aim, movement, and mechanics coach. We're going to be talking in detail about movement and mechanics. And there are so, so many cool little segments in this one. I really highly recommend you check it out. As well as actually checking out Sev's stuff. Link in the description. I had a phenomenal time with him. Great coach. Check him out and enjoy the video. So break me down what we're looking at today for those in chat that maybe aren't familiar with, with you or your work or, or what we're going to be looking at today. <laughs> So I am a mechanics coach, meaning I focus on like positioning, I focus on movement, I focus on aim. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wanted to break down today some VODs that I got from a higher level soldier player uh, mm -hmm. who is in the kind of community of just mechanics. And I wanted to break down how kind of you can improve your mechanics overall okay. as a player. Yeah. Sick, 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 sick. So when you say you're a mechanics coach, what kind of things are... What kind of things are you looking at here? Because a lot of people just here, including myself included, just here mechanics are thinking, you know, crosshair placement, you know, finding sensitivity, maybe practice routines. But I assume it's a lot more complicated than that. So when we're talking mechanics, where does that conversation start and where does it end, I guess? So it depends on really what you're looking for. If I'm doing more of an in-game Overwatch VOD like I'm doing today, mm -hmm. it's going to start with me usually talking to someone about their daily routine, stuff like that. And then we go into the game. Right. And then I focus just on how... It basically, what I focus on specifically is everything around and surrounding your aim and how okay. to improve that. Okay. Okay. Mm. Uh, here. I can go live now. Yeah, do it. Do it up. Do it up. I was fixing to get my Microsoft Paint, but this will be easier. Okay, let me get this pop out. Um, All right. Full screen. And I think, I think we should be good. Awesome. So yeah, we're good. I just wanted to break down before everything else. Aim is very kind of complex, right? I like to break it down into three different categories. Mm -hmm. Positioning, movement, and uh, what you call it? Sorry, mouse control. Mm -hmm. Now, what that kind of means is positioning is how you're positioning, obviously, right? right? How you're forcing the enemy to position, just stuff like that. Really basic, just in terms of how can I minimize my hitbox while maximizing what I can see of the enemy. Okay. Uh, movement is very straightforward, how you're moving. Uh, however, you can kind of break that down more into things like dodge and things like strafe aim, mm -hmm. which I'll be talking about a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll come back to that. And then mouse control, which is your raw ability to move your mouse from point A to point B. Okay. Now, all those things combined is how you can aim and how well you aim, right? So since movement's a big thing in Overwatch, I want to touch especially on dodge and strafe aim. Okay. Now, the difference between the two is dodging is when you are avoiding damage and strafe aim is when you are trying to put damage out. Okay. So strafe so, is like moving to try and make the enemy team miss their shots, but also I'm actively shooting at the same time. Dodging is I'm not shooting really at all. I'm just focused solely on survival. So you can still be shooting during those times. It's okay. just more so the different types you can, that different types of way you can actually physically move. Oh, I got it. Right? Okay. Okay. Because I'll I'll find the actual first example here, but uh, strafe aim is a big thing in just overarching general, right? Like you'll see right here. Right. Now, this is a form of strafe aim, right? You'll mm -hmm. see that when the Widow first jumped, obviously what we're doing is dodging, right? Because we're moving very erratically. We're trying to avoid incoming damage from that Widow. Right. That's the priority. Now, so dodging, dodging is when the movement's a priority. Strafing is when the hitting the shots is a priority. Is that like a exactly. beginner way? Okay, I'm trying to find like a good way of defining it. Okay, makes sense. Keep going, sorry. So, no worries. Uh, so you'll see that we are in a situation now where we can do damage, right? The Widow's mm -hmm. not peeking us. We can do damage, right? Mm -hmm. So this is, sorry, I should say the player. Uh, this is Mad Badman, uh, okay. who lent me some VODs, Perfect. and he's a very high-level aimer. Okay. So uh, basically, what you'll see here is 
just right off the bat, this is what strafe aim is. And you'll see we have the target in our crosshair. How can we move to maximize damage? There are two different main forms, right? And these break down into different other ways, right? But the main ways to uh, strafe aim are anti-mirroring and mirroring. Okay. So anti-mirroring is if your target is going left, you will go right. Okay. Now what this does is you keep your crosshair very... <laughs> you move it very consistently, right? If you're moving and you're essentially circling each other, what happens is you're aiming at a straight line. Mm. However, when you're mirroring, you're not aiming at all, right? You'll see in this mod in particular, right, a lot of mirroring is taking place when you're dueling a projectile character, right? Because they'll have to actually aim, right. whereas you don't, right? So you can see, like, right there, just trying to maximize aim off the bat and min-maxing, we're already able to hit our shots, right? We're able to do right. more damage, right? Right. So it's a very minor example there, right? But... Uh, you'll kind of see throughout the VOD just the ways... Uh, I, I want to especially focus on the movement, right? Yeah. The way that uh, he's moving is always, almost always going to be prioritizing doing damage. And you'll see the few times he's moving to dodge, it's very, very obvious. But uh, another thing that I wanted to point out, too, in conjunction, conjunction sorry, with the movement was how he's positioning himself. Mm -hmm. Now... He's very obviously not dodging, right? He's very much trying to move so he can hit his shots, which makes sense, right? He's on soldier. He's in a situation where he doesn't need to dodge. But a big thing that he's doing with his positioning, called this is called geometrical positioning, which is obviously there's game sense positioning, which is I want to be here because this is how my character plays. Mm -hmm. But that's how, how I break it down. Uh, but then there's geometrical positioning, which is, this is how I position to maximize my damage. This is how I position to minimize my hitbox. Right, okay. So you'll see a big thing here is, I notice this all the time. You'll see players always playing at the edge of cover, right? Uh, sorry, the edge of high ground. Yes. So one thing that you'll notice is you'll uh, our player here, Mad Badman, rarely does that. He's always playing very far back on this cover, so you can only ever really see the top of his head. And you'll notice that just like even here, right? Right, right. There's only a certain, like, he's only only just enough to see what he's shooting at, and then anything else is unnecessary hitbox that makes it easier for the enemy team to hit their shots. Precisely, right? And okay. then in combination with straight aim and just this basic mirroring and anti-mirroring, you'll see how easy it is to just hit shots, right? It's just super easy. Uh, it, it's very kind of difficult to learn this stuff, if that makes sense. Yeah. A lot of the time you'll see this from players. It's very second nature, right? Right, right. Uh, but I still find it super important to kind of point that out, especially for newer sure, players. Sure, sure. Well, it's like one of those things that is, is, it's so hard to learn because it's so, it's always something to consider, you know, it, it like never is mm -hmm. not. So it's like almost overwhelming to start learning it. But I, I think somebody like you who, who's able to coach good habits early and often I mean, it's going to pay off in the long run, I, I'm sure. Yeah, it, it's super... It, once you are able to start learning it, it's very valuable. Another thing here is just, you'll see, the it's raw, pure damage, right? Right. Uh, one of the other things that he's doing to maximize just how much damage he's doing is, I'm going to point out right here, just basic movement, right? You'll always see basic movement just left and right, right? That's mm -hmm. how every Overwatch player is going to move. They're going to move right. left and right. They understand that. The thing is, you'll notice this, especially at the higher ranks, and I'm sure you see it all the time with these mm -hmm. higher-level DPS players, is more diagonal movement, right? Mm -hmm. And what this does is it just makes it harder to hit you since you're not moving full speed to the right. You're slower, and you're moving forward, right. for example. It slows your ADAD acceleration because there's an, 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 a forward and backward movement as well. Exactly. Okay. And also, sense. it makes it easier to actually aim because you're moving your crosshair less and less, right? Okay. You can see here the way we're angling ourselves, right? Is just we're making it so we're able to do the most damage possible while moving at a slight angle so we barely have to move our mouse. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. And you will see here, for example, I think it's right here. I remember I watched it this morning and I huh. wrote notes and then I lost them. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> Listen, I'm, um, I'm, we're talking about the scuff day today. It happens. Yeah, it does. Um, but another thing I want to point out is just kind of... Oh, it, I thought it was right there. But another thing I'll point out, sorry, is here. The sure. dodge. Uh, he'll start dodging here. And what I want to point out is just how he's moving. Now, a lot of the time people dodge, right? You'll see a spot like this, and you'll go, oh, okay, I can dodge by just going... Normally players will be like, oh, I can just left right here, right? Right. The issue is, 
when you're putting yourself in a situation like this where there's a wall right behind you and a wall over here, what are you really doing? Well, you're limiting your movement, right? You can mm -hmm. only realistically move between these two walls. Right. Now, if you're playing against a higher level player, they're going to recognize that. They're going to just beam you because they know where you can move and where you can't. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that a lot of players do, when they're, especially when they're new, is they will make their strafes very, very... I, I can't think of the word for it right now, but, oh, uniform. Very uniform yes. strafes. Meaning... One, two, one, two, one, two, exactly. one, two. Right, okay. Instead of one, one, two, two, one, two, one, two, two, one, you know, whatever. Exactly. Okay, okay that makes sense. And the best way I found to kind of get into that habit was create these little semicircles. Go. Try to stay within them, but just make it random. Never make the same strafe. Okay. Every single time you move, you should have some form of thought behind it, right? Because that's going to affect how you're playing the game. It, mm. it affects how you're aiming. It affects whatever you're doing at the time. So you need to have thought behind it. You can't just randomly spam. Why would you do that when you can move between these two semicircles? Move forward here, then maybe backward here, forward here, and et cetera, et cetera right? Oh. Now, wait. Now, I have a question for you. So you're saying and, you're giving yourself, instead of two options of movement, you're giving yourself four options with forward, back, backward left or forward left backward left forward right backward right is that correct well you can move in any sort of direction right okay because for sorry that's just an example right i sure. should explain myself sure. more sure. clear there okay well, let's just say for example there's a fire in the air right yeah well why would we move to the left or right or i did that backwards yeah <laughs> why would we do that when we can move forward and backwards that far is still gonna have to aim at us but we're not gonna have to aim really She's essentially staying in the same spot because when we move forward, we just have to adjust our crosshairs as such. And right. when we move backward, we just adjust our crosshairs. It's a bigger adjustment right. for her crosshair than it is for us. Exactly. Got it. And that's kind of the goal. We always want to make it so that they're moving our crosshair, their crosshair, sorry, more than we're moving ours. Okay. Now, that's, that's a great wanna... soundbite right there. That's a great soundbite. <laughs> that makes total sense. Yeah. Now, it's kind of confusing because I mentioned straight aim earlier, so you, people would think like, oh, well, why don't I just always do that, right? Right. Well, because you're just going to, for example, if it's a situation where you aren't at an advantage, right, you're just going to lose it, right? If mm -hmm. you're in a situation where you can mirror, but you're lower HP than your opponent, why would you do it? Why wouldn't you work on dodging, right? Right, right. And then you can see here, the dodge is very, very, it, we don't need to straight aim at all because we're in visor. Right. So the dodge is very, very not uniform. Very, very ununiform. I forget the word. Uh, um, um, uh, Fred, <laughs> now you got me. Um, random, unorthodox. Random, yeah. Uh, there's a word in there somewhere. We'll dig it out eventually. Yeah. We'll find it. But um, the way he's dodging is so unpredictable that you just can't really hit, hit it, right? It's mm -hmm. so hard, even though you're in that That's crazy. space. Also, yeah, this is another thing that I want to uh, touch on because it goes hand in hand when movement, aim, and that's positioning, right? So when you're kind of putting yourself in a situation like this, obviously this isn't the best spot to be game sense wise, right? Right. However, if we want to get the most out of position, this position, sorry, how can we do that? Well, when we're over here, what we're doing is we're putting our opponent, is, say we're over here, for example, right? We'll go back a split second okay. to when we were slightly to the uh, right. Okay. Right. We'll just say that we stay here, and this Sojourn comes over here. Okay. Right? Well, yeah. that Sojourn easily comes back into cover. Right. So what we can do is we slightly move to the left, and then that Sojourn can do nothing at all. Right. Right. Wait, wait. Can, can, I, can I say this? I'm so excited because I, I yes. spotted this. So you, somebody might say, well, then aren't you further from cover? Well, no, because your cover isn't a wall. It's the floor. And theoretically, exactly. you're always if you you can move further left to force that cover into that sojourn to be out of cover, and backwards a little bit to where you hide your hitbox, which is exactly what they do here. So that actually you're just as close to cover as you were on the right, but you remove that sojourn's cover. Exactly. Not only that, we can move slightly backwards so that again, like you said, we're minimizing our hitbox, right? Right. And so they can just see your head. However, this is a situation where we now have the advantage because uh, we're showing so much less, and yes. therefore, we can strafe aim. Right there. There's the cover. Yep. Ah, and then there are times, okay. too, where you're just standing still, right? And that seems – that's a big thing that I see with newer players is they're either standing still or they never stand still at all, right? Right. And I'm sure you can kind of see, agree that you see that here or there, too, right? But um, yeah. the thing is you always want a mix because – 
like there, that's a situation where we just don't need to move. The sojourn doesn't have rail. She's not mm -hmm. going to get rail. We can just stand still. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? It's very, very interesting how you can kind of work on your mechanics like this. Well, for because, example, like right there, like there's a Sigma shield, so I noticed that he slowed down his movement for a second. Because exactly. he has a Sigma shield, so no reason AD80 strafing. Mm -hmm. Right here, he has a yeah. Sigma shield. And this Genji, not only is this Genji completely out of cover, if that Genji wants to go forward, he's limiting his movement. He can, will only be right. able to move here. So why would you move out of this position? Right. right. Yeah, there's a for brief pause there. Mm -hmm. Okay. This the reason I asked this player for pods is they're very good at identifying that type of stuff, right? All right. And you'll see here, it, it's another example of being able to make those little strafes and understanding the way the target's moving, and forcing them to be out of cover and forcing yourself into the cover. Right. It it sounds very tedious and it's a very odd way of saying it. I understand, but it's very kind of. It's hard to describe, yeah. right? I'm having a hard time finding the words for well, it. I but... think you're doing a fine job. And I think the thing, too, is as well as it said, like, it may be difficult to describe, but there are ways to package it in something that's processable, like we talked about utilizing just the simple tip that you give me with high ground, which is like, when you're on high ground, don't be on the edge. Be a couple feet back where you'll limit your... I mean, that's something very actionable, very practicable right there, immediately. Um, exactly. Being unpredictable with your strafing, trying not to strafe all the time for no reason, knowing the difference between when I should be strafing, when I should be dodging, right? Uh, maybe swinging wide on high ground so that you deny enemy cover. I mean, those are all like, you can't do all of them at the same time, just like any Overwatch concept, but you could absolutely like take those out in, their, in, in, in that one individual little tidbit and go apply that for several days practice and internalize that um heck i remember i when i was trying to break my jumping habit uh with with uh zenyatta which is i guess a separate movement issue uh i would just grind it and try hard ffa as part of my warm-up routine and so these things I mean, would you think that these things are also practicable as part of a warm-up routine as a way to like oh 100%. internalize them okay I mean, there you go i mean this is this is this is great okay keep going sorry so i'm a bit of a kovacs player right i have a Right. How many hours do I have? I think in total I have nearly 3,000 hours in name sure. training. Gosh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I get that a lot. <laughs> um, so one thing that I'll do a lot in name training is you'll see people just playing these big uh, scenarios with big dots standing still. What right. you can do is in a lot of scenarios you'll, you're able to move around. So you can practice this strafing. You can work mm. on implementing it. Hmm. Now here's a question for you. Does Kovacs have movement conservation or can you turn it off like to make it more feel overwatchy? <laughs> There are scenarios, I make a bunch of them, for example, that mm. have overwatch movement. Mm. See, I would love I would love for you to, like, that's 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 where the aim coach comes in. You need to guys go get a session <laughs> with this guy. Because um, you can, like, uh, you, you, you'll make the Kovacs worth it. Because I get people coming to my sessions all the time, they want to play Kovacs. I'm like, no, 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 no. If you're going to play Kovacs, you only play Kovacs if Sev lets you play Kovacs. That's the rule for me. <clears throat> I actually don't encourage it that much. I don't think it's that useful. Uh, oh. past a certain level okay mm -hmm. why is that so i think that once you kind of get that fundamental level down where mm -hmm. you're able to understand how to move your mouse to properly aim which yeah. that's a whole rant i could go on um huh. <laughs> it's a uh, very <clears throat> your time in kovacs will get less and less useful the more and like the better you are okay and it's weird to think about because when I was starting out, I would spend no time at all in Kovacs, and I wasn't improving. And then I started spending like three hours a day at one point, which, yeah, I know is a lot. But mm -hmm. um, then I was improving a lot, and then it slowly dwindled down again and again. Now, that's because I started getting these fundamentals down, right? Mm -hmm. This fundamental level of strafe aim, this fundamental level of just tracking, once you're past that in Kovacs, you really don't need it. You can just play Try Hard FFA for the same improvement. Interesting. And, and do you recommend Try Hard FFA? Are there any codes that you've found? I don't know how much experience you have with the workshop, but are there any codes that have stood out to you? Because I'm sure Chad is like dying to know. You know, JBW5K is JBW. probably the best code. All right. All right. I'm looking. I'm breaking out the pen. JBW5K. <laughs> I might have to, at the end of the session, I might have to pull it up. I want to see it. Okay. Okay. What, I also what about have... it makes it good? So that one is a Havana map with the randomized bot movement, and it's very good because you're able to just move around, just shoot however okay. you want to. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, it's I, not I, very I easy to edit. That code, but I, I, I think that was was that the Ons code? I feel like Ons is there's something. I think, oh wait, you know what? I'm silly because I have a lot more codes that I can just grab you really quick. Please. Uh, in a server. Okay. Full of people who do this stuff all the time. Brilliant. 
Look at this. Look, so look this... At all this free content. This is just great. You've ever heard of, um, I mean, do you know much about ZHTD8 or Vaxta? Uh, Vaxta, I like, but okay. it's not my favorite. Okay. Why is it not your favorite? Uh, I don't know. Honestly, it's just a preference thing. I can't give you a real reason. I'll... Okay. <laughs> it's... It's really just a preference thing. I just prefer JW BW5K. One thing I don't like about Vax is the infinite cooldowns annoys me. At least for <laughs> at least for like tracer, like it's impossible to practice tracing there because you have infinite blink. So it's like it's just bad practice, you know. One thing I will bring up now is kind of if you want to be practicing this strafe aim and dodge, mm -hmm. you can be practicing your strafe aim very easily in these codes, but it's super difficult to practice dodge. And the reason is dodge is inherently just a mess. Uh -huh. Because what one person can aim at easily, another person might not be able to aim at at all. Mm. So there's so, a little bit of RNG involved. Exactly. Now, the best ways I found you can dodge someone is a few things you can work on. Now, I in those codes I sent you, there is something called LG Vamp, and that's super useful. Okay. Because what happens is you are regening health for doing damage, oh. and you're trying to dodge your opponent. Oh, that's a cool little game. It keeps it fresh. Yeah. Right? It's it's based off Quake. Uh, if you ever played, uh, I'm aware. Uh, like I'm, aware I'm, I'm aware of it. I'm aware of it. But yeah. real quick, before we start talking about dodging here, like we know the difference between strafing and dodging. Strafing, you're playing for more for your shots. Dodging, you're playing more to live. It doesn't necessarily mean you're not taking shots, but there's a, there's a hierarchy there. What I guess in terms of the action, we talked about strafing being more of the left, right, forward, left, backwards, right. Something these these minor adjustments back and forth, maybe depending on the situation. What is what constitutes a dodge? I guess, and I think you're about to get into that. But like, what does so, what constitutes a dodge as opposed to a strafe? If I am looking at you, let me draw this because Please. I am walking around my room with my wireless headset, and it's so much easier if I just draw it. Sure. <laughs> uh, so we are two targets looking at each other. You mm -hmm. and me. We are head on. Yes. You have the advantage, be it health, be it damage, be it whatever. Right. I am not going to strafe aim you, because if I do, you will beam me, right? right? So what I'm going to do is try to avoid your damage. Now, fundamentally, dodge is just... Dodge is just... Dodge, okay, so dodge just in general refers to avoiding damage, right? Right, right. That can be through jumping, which probably is a whole... Okay, jumping's a whole tangent, because... <laughs> I'll just mention this right now, because you mentioned jumping earlier, and I was going to get into it then, but I'm like, probably not the best time. Sure. I'd like to split the jump into two parts. Okay. The unpredictable part and the predictable part. Ah, that's now, a great way of putting it. I never thought about that. Yes, because you are forced to react to this part, right? You see the target jump, and you're like, oh, they are up in the air now. I need to adjust. Uh-huh. But what goes up must come down, right? Okay. Can I, can I guess? Can I guess? Can I guess? Okay. <laughs> this this, this, this guess, excites guess. me so much. Because this, you know what this is? is I'm learning as well, so I love this. Okay. <laughs> Theoretically, a hero like Hanzo with a slow rate of fire... Ha jumping versus a Hanzo, if you're trying to dodge, might actually be beneficial if you jump during the release or right at the release of his bullet. Because the predictable so part would be during his animation of where he's like charging it up. Does that make any sense? Like you could theoretically time yes. your jump so that it throws off his aim, and then the predictable part is when you're safe because he's not shooting anyway. Or am I, what, what am I misapplying? Exactly. Oh, you're right. Okay. If 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 you can do it in that situation, I usually don't tell people to go out and try that because <laughs> yeah, I've gotten. That's pretty hard. <laughs> I, yeah, I I've tried it in my own head. I'm like, oh, this is so smart. That Zen's gonna volley, and then I'll jump and I'll get destroyed, and I'll be like, oh, I'm terrible. Right, but, right, right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> usually, it's it's usually the way I like to talk about jumping is oh. if you're jumping into cover, for example, it's great because the unpredictable part is there, right? Mm -hmm. Or you can make this the unpredictable part by oh, jumping oh, out of cover. Jumping into cover so that the un you're jumping as you're in the air, the top half, then you're behind a wall. And then as you slowly float down to earth, it doesn't matter. You're already behind cover. Okay. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Sorry. Or jump out of cover. Mm -hmm. Right. And you can make this part the unpredictable part. Ah, because they're not expecting you to jump. They're just expecting you to just exactly. walk around the corner. It, and someone with good crosshair placement, like our subject here, is going to place their crosshair here and not expect you to come from the height. Right. right. Okay. So okay. that tangent's over, right? Let's get back to the dodge. Okay. Now, if we are looking head on, I'm going to want to dodge here. What yes. can I do? So what I can do is super easy. I can simply shift and try to make it so you have to aim at me. Now. That sounds very basic, right? And that yes. sounds, well, obviously, right? Yes. You are aiming at me in this direction. What happens if I shift over here and I keep it this way? What happens if I make it so that you have to play on 
uh, let me like move physically so I know how I'm saying this right now. Yeah, sure. So let me have your little mouse pad, right? Okay. You have your mouse. Mm -hmm. Why don't I make you play on one side of it? In this situation, why don't I just force you to play on this side of your mouse pad only? Mm. Right? Why don't I move over here and force it so that you're only playing on a certain part, an awkward angle, right? Right. Why don't I make it so that you're forced to actually aim at me and look at me, right? No matter how you move, I'm going to stay so that I'm on this part of your mouse pad. So I'm you're always moving to his or her left. For the as an example. Yes. As an example. So what you might do, what that might be is like a large strafe to your right, short strafe back, large strafe short, short, large short, but the majority is still moving that direction so that they end up, they run out of mouse pad pretty quickly. Exactly. And that gets into a concept that is my favorite thing to ramble about ever. So thank you for bringing this You're up. You're welcome. Movement with bias. Okay. Now, what that means is we are favoring a direction. Now, oh in gosh, dodging... I didn't think about that. Mm -hmm, exactly. In dodging, we're always, 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 always going to want to move both directions, right? And we're going to want yes. to throw on forward and backwards, no matter what. That's just how dodge works. Yes. But that doesn't mean we can't favor a direction. We can't force you. That doesn't mean we can't force you to look over here and use right. that awkward angle of your mouse pad. That right. doesn't mean we can't make it so that we're favoring the direction so that we are aiming on the center of our pad or the end of our pad we're more comfortable with, which, by the way, is our left side. Right. So, right. Uh, just as a general tip, if possible, try to get someone on your on, so you're aiming on the left side of your pad. Why is that? Is it, uh, are people generally worse pulling the mouse towards them or running into the keyboard? Or is there a specific Thank you reason? for using the word pull. That is my favorite word in aiming. So this was explained to me by a coach uh, who's, so, or a player who's very, very good called Siba. And they were like, oh, yeah, no, I'm pushing and pulling my mouse. And I'm like, that's stupid. And I thought about that for like more than a second. I'm like, that's genius. <laughs> because what happens is you are pulling your mouse to the left, right? You're yes. pulling it with your arm. Yes. And you're pushing it away from your body. Yes. But when you're pulling it, you're playing on the area that's most comfortable. You're playing in, like... It's closer <laughs> to like your kinda... body. Exactly. It's closer to your body, and it's closer to your chest. So you have the extra bit of stability to right. actually aim with. So, <laughs> long story short, move with a bias, because you can force them to play at an awkward angle of their mouse pad. And also because you're actually dodging their shots and no. forcing them to aim at an angle. Yeah, unless they're left-handed, wouldn't pulling, like, strafing to your right, their left, make it easier for them to aim with pull? Yes. However, how many left-handed players do you know? How many left-handed players do you know that have good aim as well? Right, right, right. Well, that's what I'm saying, though, because if I'm... I'm let me, let me, let me, sorry. If I'm right-handed and I'm <laughs> strafing to their right, they're going to have to move their mouse to their left to follow my movement to their left and my right, right? <laughs> So isn't that making it easier for me as a right-hand player to follow them because I get to pull my arm in tighter? Yes. Okay. It should be. I think I see what you're saying. But I, I guess uh -huh. I guess I guess it would be like, wouldn't it be better to strafe the opposite direction to make them push the mouse? Uh, yes, it would be. I, okay. I was using left earlier as an example. It, it's oh, ideal I, I that see, you want I see, them I see, I see. You're just, yeah, yeah. you're just drawing the mouse pad, but you didn't. You, it was a left-hand person in your yeah. example. Okay. Okay. I just to make sure that was clear. Okay. So so that makes sense to me. Um. I had another question. Shoot. I, I think that I think that's mostly it. Sorry, continue. Of course. Um, but yeah, essentially, those kind of 1v1 codes are amazing practice for that because I can pull up VODs. I have hours of VODs of just sim 1v1s on my right. YouTube channel. So you're saying left uh, strafe favoring bias is, for most players, going to be better considering most players are right-handed. Yes, but I don't like to think about it like that. Okay. I usually don't stay... I don't recommend a side or whatever because okay. players will find what they're comfortable with. It might also depend on the map. Like, would you want to strafe towards cover? Oh, yeah. That might depend on the left or the right, right? Okay, that makes exactly. sense. Exactly. That's right. why strafing right. the bias is also important. I'm, I'm digging because... way too deep. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. This is perfect because okay. this is exactly the type of stuff that I ramble about, right? Oh, right, right. Because why okay. would you strafe with bias over here mm -hmm. when there's cover over here and your team's going to be over here? Right, 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 right. That makes sense. That makes sense. Right. Okay, okay, okay. And I guess a lot of it depends on the amplitude of the strafe as well, right? Like you said, you don't have to strafe each side equally, but you could do left, small strafe, right small strafe left big strafe left small strafe left big strafe right small strafe stuff like that throwing okay. in these longer strafes is super beneficial a lot of the time especially in these types of 1v1 situations because mm -hmm. why would you long strafe there 
right? Right. <laughs> if you ever right. play uh, like TX with someone, which is also good mechanics practice, and they just walk into a wall, for example, and sometimes you're unable to hit it, that's because we just don't expect it to happen, right? Right, right. The so, unpredictability is so important in dodge. All right. It's so weird that you're like, you build us find a way to get better at being unpredictable. That seems like such an, yeah. that sounds like a, an oxymoron, <laughs> you know? Like, mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's weird because there's um, a whole community for like this dueling, this LG dueling, right? Yeah. And I talked to all sorts of people because my whole thing for a while was I want to be the smartest player. And right. I was just like, why do you this? Why do you do that? And half the time people were like, oh, I have no idea. And the other half <laughs> people were like, this is the exact reason why. Right. Like I'm telling right. you now. Right. right. So it's super interesting, basically. And you'll see in a situation like this, right? It's obviously fine where you're not necessarily dropping up height because that happens, right? <laughs> but <laughs> playing the edge of height there to get that extra sight line is fine because right. there's nothing pressuring you. Right, exactly. Okay. Now, this was also pretty good if I recall. Yeah. This is oh my a classic days. example of straight That right? is unreal. This guy is probably the second, or in terms of aim training, was the best for a long time. This guy is very, very good. Oh my goodness! Yeah, and that's just what strafing can do for you, right? And, and you can obviously, see, this like, guy is. You insane. can see like the predictable aspect of the Genji jump there is like almost what killed him. Exactly right, and you'll see it's an arc almost, right? Yeah. And that kind of the dash locks the end of this arc, and then after that, he has a double jump. He's probably going to do it at the end of this dash, right? Mm -hmm. So he's going to do that, and he's going to go behind cover because that's all he's going to do. Right. We've just predicted his pathing from this one animation, right? Yeah, and that second half of the jump almost kills him because he just exactly. like like almost all the damage is right in that second half of the jump. Like you do like exactly. we miss every shot, and then bang, it's like that second half we lock and it's over. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so weird the little things that go into this. This is one of my favorite parts of this because I get to just describe how insane this player is because of this oh just that gosh and we can dissect that please and ramble about it because look where we're positioned right our sig is over here yeah so they're pressuring our sig they're throwing jabs at him right they're doing whatever oh, they can i know which, i know i know i know can i can i guess I, can i guess yes, I'm, I'm not yes gonna say your thunder this one time i'm I'm, <laughs> okay. I'm just i'm getting a student excitement over here so keep going sorry no worries so our sig's forced to move. They think that they can move for free now. Uh -huh. We're positioned over here, right? We're positioning so that when this sojourn tries to walk, she's now against a wall. She can no longer strafe over here. If she wants to strafe over here, she is in the open. She cannot oh. go backwards because there is no cover to the right, like over here, right? If she yes. goes forward, she's going to go over here, which we can easily walk over here and mirror. Sorry, anti mirror. So we can right. keep her in our LOS. Right. right. So you're and saying because that of that, my angle Sorry. philosophy was right all along. Yes, it was. Huh. Right? Because, yeah, exactly. Because just easily, we're able to just melt. There's nowhere for them to run because of our positioning there. Huh. Right? And you'll see, we're still abusing... Oh, this is amazing. Oh, the dodge there. Mm -hmm, the dodge there, right? Just It's a small thing, but you'll kind of see here that we're just making it so that if we're in a situation where we're just going to get beamed... Because someone's shooting at it, we're at least hard to hit, right? Yeah. And as soon as we uh, deflect, we go into we go into strafe mode because we know that now exactly. we can, we have a window to damage. Mm -hmm. Now here's Perfect. a question like, for you: the, the angles does it also like I look at that sojourn shot as well, and I'm also wondering if the sojourn was very focused on on, on strafing from forward, and that's why the angle here mattered so much, is because her movement is focused on moving evasively in one dimension, not in three. And she can't move in three dimensions with the wall behind her. So then when exactly. the soldier shoots her, the soldier ends up just shooting in a straight line almost. Exactly. Because our positioning is so much better. Oh, that you have caught on. Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> because I love angles. Let's, like, also, let's dissect even further. Let's say someone over here is looking over here. Well, what mm -hmm. happens if we're shooting them from over here? Well, they're going to want to look at us, right? Right. They're going to. So what happens is they look at us, but what does that mean? Well, they can't move back anymore. Right. They can't move over here anymore. Right. And they can only really move over here, over here, over here, or over there. Right. right? So we've cut off all these angles of movement simply by our positioning. I, I notice this a lot, especially with projectile heroes. You notice this, I mean, even as a projectile specialist myself with Zenyatta and Ana and so on, is by doing this, like when you cross out those blue arrows right there, and I'm thinking projectile, I know where that target's going to go in the next half second. They're going to go yeah. to my left. 
They're going to go mm -hmm. to my left. So I'm not even aiming at the target as an Ana or Zen. I'm aiming towards the cover that I know they're going to be moving towards. Exactly. And we've done this with our positioning, right? right? And we don't even have to aim. And we're already making it so that we're having an easy time to aim, right? Right. It, it's dissecting these little things is how we can become these top players. Just when we find out the reasoning for why people do things like this, it's the same thing as regular VOD, right? Right, right, right. It's super interesting. It, every little thing in this VOD, it's four minutes and we've spent half an hour. Right, right. right? And, and I think it's also f unfair to even say that this is micro. I think that like it's obviously micro by the, by the definition of it, but how much of it bleeds into making the macro decisions with how we just position as a soldier, I think is really important. Like why angles matter, why covers matter, how you can leverage cover better. This isn't just something that's going to help you win 1v1s. It might impact exactly. how you play the game as a whole. This was the example that I wrote down, and I'm like, make sure you talk about this. I have it written on a, on a sticky ready. note on my monitor. I'm ready. Now, this is straight aim, and this is why straight aim is important. We're just doing what the Skenji's doing, right? We mm -hmm. force deflect, he's out. Now, why is it so valuable that we've mirrored here instead of anti-mirrored the Skenji, right? Now, the difference between the two is mirroring is typically, if we are going to win that 100% of the time, we are going to mirror, right? That's mm -hmm. typically how it works. Mm -hmm. Or... If we have better aim than our opponent, we are going to anti-mirror because we know that we'll be able to keep our mouth straighter than them and keep our like crosshair in a straight line. Now, here's a question for here? you. Here's a question for you. How how do you make these reads this fast? Like how do, do I read the Genji's going left, so I go left, and then Genji's going right, then I go right, or vice versa for anti-mirror? How do you get that good at that? Like is that just something you just practice to be able to just instantly do in the moment? You know what I'm saying? Because I understand Our that theory, but it's like, man, that, that has to be so hard to practice. You are so gifted with the words you're using. Thank you so much for using huh. the word read. That leads into target reading. Target okay. reading is the bane of my existence. What that means <laughs> is you are determining the speed a target is going, and you are determining the direction a target is going. Okay. We see this Genji. Let's see the animation. We know the animation. He's going this way at that speed. We go here. That's it. It's an unconscious thing that it gets better with time. Okay. Right? Okay. And how do you train the unconscious things? By consciously practicing them, correct? Mm. By consciously practicing it, however, one thing that happens a lot of the time with players is they're on these super high sensitivities and they're unable to track, right? Right. Or they're unable to just do whatever. How are you going to read the direction and speed of targets going when our crosshair is going like this 24-7? True, true. If you watch a player like Cookie, for example, in European contenders, German, right? they keep their... Uh, pardon? German? I think, I think he's German, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. What he does, for example, is he is so smooth with this crosshair. Moving from point A to point B. Targets are moving more smooth because of that. It's mm. that easy to read targets. Make it easier mm. for yourself, right? Uh, it also, like you mentioned, it is subconscious, and it just comes with time, really. Okay. Like, Makes that's sense. just how it works. I, again, I've spent 3,000 hours in Aim Tennis, and yeah. a lot of that's on movement. That's why I can right. do this, too, for example, right? Right. Not, yeah. <laughs> like, but one of the things I want to bring up here is we're in a situation where, yes, we'd win if we mirrored this because we have a mercy pocket, right? However, why are we specifically mirroring this Genji instead of anti-mirroring? Well, we don't have a lot of space to move over to our right, so that's one reason. However, the biggest reason is projectile. What does that mean? He can't keep his crosshair still. We're moving to the left. We can keep our crosshair still by just keeping it on him, right? Just right. up and down. That's all we have to adjust for. But we just track him with our movement, really. He's still going to have to aim because he's going to have to aim ahead of us rather than on us. Right? right, right. So we're making it so it's harder for him to aim. Right? Right. Just, he wasn't able to hit a shot. And then even there, anti-mirroring there so we can keep our positioning on the Ana, right? She probably would have died regardless there. By but moving also, to the left so she couldn't get to the corner in time to save her life. Exactly. Right, okay. And all these little things adding up is just so big. Another thing that is very... Hard to kind of pinpoint here, but I'm going to say it anyways because huh. I love rambling about this. Is look how he's playing this corner. Now, what happens if we're hugging this wall? Well, we can't move over here if need be, right? Obviously, we're not going to have to. Right. What happens when we want to peek? Well, our whole hitbox is going to be out, right? Right. What happens when we're playing further back? We can peek an inch little by little out and right. uncover. This is called slicing the pie. It's a big thing in tech FPS, and we're uncovering more and more of the map as we slowly peek out from a further angle. We control what we see. 
instead of having the wall control because we're full peaking, right? Right. Does that kind of make sense? Yes, it does. Let me ask a question though. Is there ever a world where that becomes a high risk, high reward kind of a play style? So you're further from the wall here. So that means that you control how far that you can peak and yet still have the cover of being able to LOS the, the Ramatra in front of you by moving to the left, right? Instead of running into a wall and or having to peak the Ramatra and, and being slower to peak wide, right? My question yeah. for you is though, what if in a different scenario, you see where the vehicle is, the car, right? There's somebody that peeks yes. out of an off angle there. You're caught with your pants down in your current position, but theoretically, if you're closer to the corner, now not this particular corner, this corner is long, right? But like, yeah. let's say there was a better a doorway, for example, would it be a safer play for you to be positioned on the corner there because the off angle would, you would still be able to provide or reach cover within a reasonable period of time because you're playing that corner here. You kind of see what I'm saying? It's exactly like high risk, high reward versus low risk, low reward with the corners that you choose. That's where map knowledge comes in, right? Right. Because look at how we're playing this as well, right? Mm -hmm. If someone decides to peek from this off angle in particular, now I know you're saying a bit of a steeper off angle. Yeah, I but, agree with you completely, sure, right? Sure, okay. But it, for example, we know that this off angle is here. So if we want to peek someone, look at the distance we have here as well. We're able right. to keep that totally angle fine. on them if we want to, right? Right. However, I agree with you. It is very high risk, high reward, but that's where kind of map knowledge and just that general positioning knowledge. Comes right. From. That makes sense. That makes total sense. Okay. And obviously when you're on high ground, then it's irrelevant because the cover theoretically is always available at our feet. Exactly. Now, it's still important to play these kind of, what if we can have that, especially versus flyers, for example, mm -hmm. it's very important to have that bit of natural cover on high ground. Yeah. But we saw this entire game. Our player, our mad bad man barely did that. All he did was just abuse the high ground for cover mm -hmm. and it worked. Now, mm. it's situational, right? But it's very valuable, I feel, to get a good feel for that high ground and just understand how to kind of play it. Right, that makes right? total sense. But this yeah, is this exciting. is four minutes and we've spent a good amount of time on it. Uh, sure. If you'd like, by the way, I have more VODs if we want to, but I think we've covered a lot here. Well, I guess, I guess I have, a, a, I think maybe the most important thing, at least for me and my viewers, would be like, this is really fascinating and interesting. And we have talked a little bit about this already, but translating it, right? We've talked about, you, you've shared some codes with me, which I definitely am gonna pull up in a second um, and look at, but also where do where do we, do we apply this in TryHard FFA? Do we just play more and get better at it? Um, I guess we talked about a lot Air. of these actionable bits here. How would you go about, would you just treat it like any other improvement? Like thinking about my old usage, I think about, where I position on the high ground. I think about the corners that I'm holding. I think, how do you actually translate all this? One of the reasons I actually chose this guy was because I knew you would make that point. Huh. This guy has been playing, if you check his YouTube channel, at least he's been uploading montages for, I think, seven years. Um, he has a lot of experience. Overwatch, he spent two months in it, I think, in his GM. Yep. Just because of that mechanic stuff, right? Yep. It comes with time. And a lot of it is going to be spending and looking at your VODs, being like, how could I position better? How could I have used this cover to my advantage more? Right. Uh, right. And, for example, Aimer7 has a great guide on it, if you want to read that, but it's a, it's a very hefty read. Yeah, um, I, I, I'm aware of it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've read that a few times, I think. And Goodness gracious. Just because interest, yeah. Um, but a lot of this, especially the aim-related stuff like movement, that's going to come in, well, all of it's aim-related, but I more mean like directly, <clears throat> like movement and the game. your mouse control. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's going to come from just practicing in Triad FFA, right? Practicing that mirroring, anti-mirroring, practicing your dodge, especially. A big mm. thing in working on that is soldier 1v1s, I found, or tracer 1v1s. Mm. Both those are great for practicing dodge. But okay. a lot of the positioning stuff is going to just come with time and understanding and just spending this time like we're doing now, looking at these VODs, being like, why are they doing this? Why am I doing this? Right, right, right. That makes um, sense. Then. One of the biggest things that I found that's useful mm -hmm. is playing soldier and playing tracer. Mm -hmm. Tracer has improved my dodge a lot, mm -hmm. and playing Soldier has improved my strafing a lot. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's isolating those skill sets, kind of. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You'll see, funnily enough, there's a bunch of aim training players like who play aim training and aim trainers as their main game. They play Overwatch as their secondary game because mm. it is so good for that. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Is that because of the lack of movement conservation and the verticality that's not in other aim trainers? Oh, you are a genius. Exactly. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm I'm aware of that at least. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. It's kind of funny because it's like Overwatch is the very non-quintessential first-person shooter with the mobile qualities, but it is such a hard thing to aim with. So it is. I think it was Aimer Seven who said this. Uh, it's. I agree with it 100%. Overwatch is the hardest game to aim in, but aim has the least amount of impact. 
Yeah, that's a, that's that's actually really. That's a, I would agree with that from what I know anyway. But yeah, okay. yeah. Seb, please plug your stuff. I want to know all about your coaching. Um, uh, I got your Twitter here on your your Discord link, but how thank will, you. will be the best way to 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 get coaching from you? Uh, the best way is to probably join my Discord server, which I think it's posted on Twitter. If not, Don't. would you mind if I actually send you an invite? Yeah, please do. Please do. Yeah. Uh, here is an invite. I'm hosting weekly tournaments in Kovacs actually. Post that um, here. Where yeah. you can play and Ooh. win money. Okay. Um, I just threw it in my can... uh, in the Twitch chat, as, so awesome. check that one out. Okay, keep going. Sorry. You can also just find me on Twitter, or Discord, just sev nine 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 or sev sev sev, okay. and then my Metify is just sev. Okay.